Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. As you guys can see, we are in the third bay right now. We will be bringing the truck kind of inside for this project, but as you guys can see, we've got a drain pan filled with transmission fluid and what that is, that's actually from the lift. If you guys remember previously, we had replaced the seal over on this hydraulic ram on the passenger side. Well, I just ended up replacing both seals on the driver's side one. So there's a seal at the top and the seal at the bottom. Had to replace both of those. We already filmed most of that, so I didn't really want to include a full video, but just a little bit of an update. So for today's video, what we're doing is installing a performance intake on the truck. As you guys can see in this giant box behind me, this is from General Motors. The part number is 847-89794. And that will show up as a performance intake for a 19 through 2022 Chevrolet Silverado GMC I believe the Yukon, the Denali, uh, the Tahoe a Suburban, I think they'd all use the same part number, but this one was specifically for the Silverado, but I think all those kits should be the same. But yeah, so the reason I said 19 to 22 is because technically my truck is a 23 with the refresh, the new interior, the wiring and all that. But the engine bay is the same as the 19 through 22. So uh, just uh, FYI guys, there is a, performance tune that goes with this thing. I think all it is is just some math settings and uh, unfortunately those map that math sensor update uh, is not included for the 23 plus. Obviously you guys know that's the global B architecture. They just unleashed that in HP tuner. So unfortunately you can't take the flash that there's a little bit of an update uh, for this performance intake on the earlier models the 19 through 22. But with the 23 and newer, it won't work. So, uh, you know, long story short, I messaged two guys that have had this intake. One guy has had this intake for almost 40,000 miles for over a year. The other guy, I think he's at like nine months, you know, you know, tens of thousands of miles between the two of those guys. And they've not had any check engine lights, no issues like that. So I actually bought this intake probably like six months ago, but it's kind of worried about the whole check engine light. And then if you take that to the dealership to get fixed, well, it's got an aftermarket intake, and you think that could cause problems. Well, since this is a GM performance part, it shouldn't, but you know, just wanna let you guys know that there is a update out there for the computer, just not applicable for the 23 and newers like mine. And, uh, but like I said, other people have put this intake, the s &B intake on their stock trucks, and they've never had an issue. So there always could be, just a fair warning, but like I said, I know two guys that have had this exact intake on their 23 newer trucks, no issues for thousands, tens of thousands of miles. So we got the box opened up. Here is the installation instructions. Not very thick, but it looks like there's actually an emission sticker here. So yeah, like you guys, like I said, there shouldn't be any issue with this. It is a, it does say it's legal in all 50 states. Oh, there's even a cardboard number on there too. So that's cool. And uh, yeah, so let's get the instructions open up. I'll take a real quick glance through there and see if there's anything in here that you guys should know about. All right, guys, ignore everything that I just said. These are not instructions. It's a URL to the instructions and the emission stickers, like I said. So here's the carb number. And then if you guys really care, uh, this is the GM vehicle emissions information. And uh, it says, you know, it's uh, conforms to regulations 2020. So, all right, here are all the parts included with the new intake. We've got a new elbow. I guess it's a performance elbow, whatever you want to call that. That's actually rubber. It's a, kind of a little weird. Looks like there's a new PCV hose. I'm assuming we're going to move around some of the PCV system. Here's your cone filter. That probably will get upgraded at a later date. Um, yeah, I think that's... I'm not sure if that's oilable or not. I'll try to see if there's a K&N replacement for that. So here's the intake box itself. It looks like it's going to hook up to the factory ram air style. This goes up under the front of the hood near the grill. Looks like we put our MAF sensor in right here. This connects to this elbow. This elbow will connect to the throttle body. And over here is our hardware. There's a couple screws in here. There's some zip ties and some big worm clamps. All right, guys, as you can see, the truck is behind me and I have the hood up. And basically how we're gonna start today is actually removing the negative terminal on the battery. Guys, these trucks are super quirky with batteries and disconnecting stuff and doing any service. I've actually had check engine lights turn on because I didn't disconnect the battery when I was working on the brakes. I don't know why the brake system would need the battery to be disconnected, but hey, just because 
I've already run into weird stuff like that. That's the first thing we're gonna do. Disconnect the battery. And then basically just start taking parts off. So take the filter off, take the this upper part off, get this uh, harness disconnected, get this MAF sensor disconnected. And uh, that should be about it. I've already started taking off some of the hardware. Seven millimeter for this hose clamp right here. Seven millimeter. You guys aren't gonna be able to see it, but basically kind of where my finger is, down here is the other hose clamp that attaches directly to the throttle body. That's been loosened up. I've taken off the MAF sensor harness. Just this little plug right here, pull that up, pull the sensor out, plug for the sensor out, you're good. Here, you basically gotta pull up. Then over here by my finger, we need to disconnect this. This is a PCV hose that goes back into the intake. We need to disconnect that. And then I think once we get that disconnected, I think this box might actually pull out. So, all right, so this is kind of being a big pain. Uh, I have got the clamp almost pretty much all the way off on the throttle body over here. The clamp really won't come off this intake box. Actually, I probably could yank it off now, but I actually did kind of have to split the box. You guys can see the OEM filter in there. And uh, yeah, basically there are three eight millimeter screws. There's one, there's one in the back over here, and then there's a third one over here. So three screws, it's eight millimeter on the top of the intake lid itself. All right guys, big progress. You guys can see the gargantuan of a factory box is no longer on here. Biggest struggle I had was this clip right here. You guys can see that's kind of some almost double-sided tape, kind of a rubber gasket. The bottom of the filter is actually kind of like pressed into that. So you need to pull up pretty hard for that to come off and it will finally come off. And honestly, all that this is, guys, it's like a resonating box just to quiet down the factory intake. So then you guys can see we have the tube and then connecting to the factory intake box, the top half. Then in here, we'll still have that MAF sensor that we will have to pull out and move over. But hell, the filter should just come out. There you go. Ooh, well, weird. I've never seen a factory filter have the paper filter then have a... You want to call it an auxiliary foam filter underneath it? I uh, haven't seen that before. So I don't know if that comes with it. It is, it is glued to it. Okay, so uh, this is what a factory ZR2 filter looks like. And my truck has roughly almost 10,000 miles on it. I think I just rolled over 9,000 on it. So. so getting this plug off was actually pretty easy. If you guys can see where I'm pointing to the flashlight, there is a black tong coming down from the top here underneath this green line. I basically all I did was I stuck a screwdriver in, kind of pulled back on it toward the camera. So I kind of like went in like this and pressed back. And that actually loosened up the connection and I was able to slide the wire harness right up above that. So again, right in the middle of this black tong. All right guys, I got everything off that I thought we could. There is one bolt that holds in the lower box. You guys can actually see that right there. I got that, it's a 10 millimeter nut. I got that off. But actually what's holding this box in is actually this little ram air scoop that I was telling you about up here. So uh, take this off, take this hood release catch off, and then we're gonna basically have to loosen this up. I think there might be a screw down in here. Take that off and that will allow us to pull that whole ram air scoop. You guys can see that down here, what I'm pointing to. We'll be able to push that forward and I think that'll allow the box to come out, so. All right guys, as I was saying, take the upper cowl, the radiator shroud, whatever you wanna call it, take the push pins off, pull that off, and then there's this ram air scoop that I was telling you about right here. And all you gotta do is pull the push pin for that. It's real simple. This goes in that hole, and that allowed us to basically get enough room to pull the factory air box up and out. And as you guys can see, the bottom half is over there. Pretty simple, what our next step is, you gotta move over the rubber grommets. So there's a grommet here, there's three of them, There's one on the front, two in the back, so those two grommets right there. Transfer everything over, and I think we're pretty much ready to put the new GM Performance intake in. All right guys, it is a little bit of a struggle to get this new aftermarket, the GM Performance kit, the box in here. You just gotta kinda take it slow, make sure you get everything out of the way. There's wire harnesses, there's hoses, there's stuff. But eventually what you're trying to do is get this top bolt right here, get that lined up. Then there's two grommets back here, you can't see them, but there's a grommet here and a grommet approximately like about right here. Get those lined up, push those in, and that'll hold your intake up in place. And then down here, we gotta get the piping from this front ram air scoop we were telling about earlier. Get that lined up and get that shoved in the box. 
All right, so I got the filter in. The filter really only goes in one way. You guys can see it is slit right here. So it's designed to kind of go on and then turn. And if you guys can see right here, these little cut outlines, they actually want you to go between the bolts. So lined up like there, it's an eight millimeter bolt for that hose clamp. And the filter itself is done. Now we got to get the hardware up here. It's a 10 millimeter bolt. We got to get those wire harness plugged in. All right guys, we got all the wiring secured, the filter in, the map sensor in. Those are two T25 screws. Took them out of the factory housing, put them on here, transferred everything over. Got the wiring, everything plugged in. The couple Christmas tree connectors that we took off, those are all plugged in. So we should be ready for the lid as well as the tube. The other thing we had to do was actually remove the PCV line. You guys can see this valve cover right here over on the passenger side. Basically had to release that. So that we are able to plug this in. I'm not really sure which way this goes. Oh, well, that kind of is obviously goes that way. Slide these on, let them click. We should be done with the PCV system at least. And there you go, the PCV system is now all hooked up. And to give you guys some advice, make sure you put the hose clamps on the tube before you actually install it. The way these GM Performance hose clamps are, they almost have like an inner lining. So there's actually kind of two rings you're trying to put on there. And uh, they're not gonna stretch wide enough to try to put it, wrap it around the tube, if that makes sense. So make sure you put that hose clamp, worm clamp, whatever you wanna call it on there. Put it on before you put the tube over the intake as well as over the throttle body. Cause you're just gonna take it off, put the hose clamp on and then stick it back on. So I had to do that, learn from my lesson, install those hose clamps first, put those in, tighten everything down. Make sure your MAF sensor's plugged in. Put the lid on. There's four bolts. Put those down. Oh, and these are a T30 Torx. And uh, that should be about it for this GM intake. All right, guys, here's an after. All right guys, so that is the completed Chevrolet Performance intake, aftermarket cold air intake, whatever you wanna call it. I'll be honest, I didn't really hear much of a difference between the before and the after. I don't know if, you know, there's so much sound deadening on these trucks you wouldn't hear it, but every time I've usually installed an intake before, usually at least can hear a little bit of that cone filter sound. You guys will know what I'm talking about. It's kind of like a whoosh, kind of like a whooshing noise a little bit, but I'm not able to hear any of that. So. Um, but supposedly I think that kit's supposed to give you like 8 to 10 horsepower difference, but I'm sure that's with the tune and everything. Um, with the car firing up, no issues with the MAF sensor, no codes or anything like that. And we'll just go ahead and enjoy that freer flowing air intake and uh, go from there. Now, uh, cost. I want to say that intake was like around $400 to $500. It might have been a little bit more. Uh, the part number that I'm going to provide you guys, you sh should be able to find that. I don't remember if I bought that through eBay or I bought that through one of my dealership partnerships. I'm not really sure where I got it. I think I got it from eBay, but so yeah, that's just another one of these cases where GM is partnering with an aftermarket company, you know, kind of like my Baja designs, the spotlights, the Borla catback exhaust. This is a, just another example of GM making these partnerships, creating parts and it won't void your warranty. So that's kind of why I went with this intake. There are a couple other ones, S and B, um, I think there's Rotofab, yeah, Rotofab has an application as well. But for our purposes and trying to keep the factory warranty, we shouldn't have any issues with that. Now, I actually probably will actually stick those stickers on that intake just to make sure that, you know, it is a GM intake. Uh, what's actually funny is, if you guys look at the factory intake, this is exactly where that emission sticker would go. So it's kind of weird that my GM intake has a location for the sticker, but it didn't actually come with the sticker. So that's just kind of weird that... You know, it's got a spot for it right on the intake, but didn't come with it. So just one of those things. And so, yeah, for like, I don't know, an hour and a half worth of work, we're able to get an intake and hopefully the truck drives a little bit quicker. <laughs> uh, but speaking of performance, we do have future plans for this truck. I'm not really going to go into it. I've kind of hinted at a couple things in the past, but this isn't it for the GM performance stuff. We've got more stuff to do, but uh, 
that'll be in the future. So, and so yeah, that's gonna be it for today's video. If you guys wanna see those updates, make sure you hit that subscribe button, turn on your bell notifications. And if you guys wanna help support the channel, check out all the links down below. I'll try to include a part number for the intake and all the tools that we use to include all that down below. And also make sure you check out our website, bonecrusherss.com. Any support you can give there goes right back into the channel, the projects, the truck and the shop and all that. And also make sure to check out with all of our used parts. We are throwing those on there and that will give you a link to eBay. So thanks guys. Have a real one. Yeah.